Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Rodeo Time, the podcast. Uh, this is a very special podcast, podcast number 100, if I'm not mistaken. We've got... Uh, wow. Is it? Yes. One hundred. This is literally 100. This is the 100, my 100th podcast. Milestone. So, well, who yeah. Who would you have for such an important event? Well, we've got the greatest bull rider ever to walk the earth. And we've <laughs> also got the PBR world champion... <laughs> Dalen in the house. You just came off your win. Yeah. Um, you uh, what was that a week ago? Uh, uh, maybe a week and a half. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> he he still it, can't even believe it. Has it like sunk that. in? We've I've been busy ever since. So you've been doing a lot of these, uh, doing some of these, doing um, watching some NASCAR racing, and yeah. Uh, so yeah. Are you um uh, have you been on any t- TV shows? No TV shows. Then the PBR kind of hooks y'all up sometimes with stuff like that. I thought. Yeah, he was on. He was on Fox News. Oh. Remember when you went to New York? Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah, you and Blue. You went to. Yeah, you went on Fox News. That's a pretty big <laughs> yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've been on there no, twice Fox now. And, yeah. No, Fox I haven't been Frank. on any. I haven't been on any. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, this podcast is brought to you by. Is it Total Feeds? Uh, That's what it is. Let me check. Let me um, check my money shirt. Yes, mutual <laughs> mutual uh, um, sponsor of Daylon and, yep. and I, um, proud sponsor. So not only my third world champion, PBR world champion. Not only the feed of choice for all of our animals, but also Total People Plus. Thank you, Corey, for bringing me my extra bottle this morning. Just ran out. Um, so yeah, I'm excited about that. What else? Can Am. They yeah, escorted us here. Yeah, they. <laughs> I got a new. I got a new Can Am yesterday. So like they. We got, drove through the mud to get here. They got the Mavericks, which are like the racing ones. Uh-huh. My buddy Dustin Jones drives. He's the racer, and then they have uh, the uh, the Defenders, which are for ranching, and that's what I usually have. Uh-huh. That's like why I'm on the team. Well, they they have like this meshed, like integrated. It's called the Commander. It's pretty much a Maverick, like a racing side by side, but with a bed, and that's what. W- and so, like right before you got here, I took him down Tack Road seventy miles an hour. Yeah, I had to clean up my a whole right side of my body. It was covered in mud, not the left side. So, <laughs> and my phone survived. But yeah, we're gonna get we're gonna get in a lot of stuff today. Yeah, we 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 tell we hear the Dalen Swearingen story. We um, literally the secret to how he became a world champion. Right. Uh, which I already personally knew the secret, obviously. <laughs> we then talk about Jordan's story. I interrupt him a lot. Also, I sincerely apologize about the construction noise in the background <laughs> at the beginning because uh, we're adding on to the warehouse here, but we get it calmed down about midway through. So yeah. just pardon the noise. Um, check out com, And now on to the podcast. <laughs> We apologize, ladies and gentlemen, for the construction. Um, in the background, you might hear some that right there. <laughs> that actually, was not Dale for we're once. A, we're actually adding on back here. So some of that big machinery in the front is uh, T-shirt printing. So we're going to print our own shirts eventually. Oh, shoot, yeah. So hopefully create a whole nother company that way you can hire even more people. So bring in more interns. Yeah. So, yep. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we have Mr. Dalen Swearingen. Or do you like to go Mr. by? Mr. What? what? <laughs> World champion? World champion <laughs> Dalen Swearingen. Yeah. Yeah. He insisted. It was in the contract <laughs> this morning. Are you going to... I'm not coming up unless you guys address me as world champion, right? Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to wear the buckle? Yeah, I'm going to wear it. Yeah. I've wanted to wear one my whole life, and now i got the opportunity to. Yeah. Heck yeah. They, they putting your name on it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, when When will that come in? I don't know. So I won three buckles, like, the last day, and uh, I don't have any of them. Because so right, you won the average too. Yeah, the average, and then like I won my first round at the PBR finals. Why didn't they give you those two? They don't do they yeah. put your names on those two? I yeah. didn't think they'd put the names on the um, 
like the seventh round, but I guess maybe they do. Huh. So you've had a pretty big year. Um, when tell us about like, let's start with the Dalen with with, with just the Dalen story. Like, we get a lot of people. You know, you're familiar with the intern pot with the intern program. Yeah, maybe we. Uh, you know, guys come in and they're they're uh, they want to learn how to ride bulls, learn how to ranch, learn how to ride Bronx. And um, I would say maybe the most commonly asked question that I have, like in my DMs, is uh, how do I get started? Be- and, and matter of fact, that's like where the idea for the Netflix show came from. They were like, what are we going to make a show about? And I said, well, I get these DMs every day, how to get started ranching or how to get started rodeoing. And, uh, and so I said, what if we just teach people? And so I wanted to call it, you ain't no cowboy, but they were like, let's just call it how to be a cowboy. And then we kind of used the, the interns as the template for how to teach America and the world how to be a cowboy. So, um, you know, now you're at a you know, world champion, first of, of many big wins, but, you know, definitely the pinnacle for any bull rider. So let's start at the beginning. I guess the, like my whole family's always been in rodeo. My mom was a, um, barrel racer and a trick rider. Um, all my grandpa's and, uh, he was a bareback rider and stuff. But anyways, I started riding, um, in North Carolina. I was born in North Carolina and, uh, lived there probably till we were about like maybe eight or nine. So I started riding sheep and calves at a uh, circle K and going to stands and stuff. And, uh, some stuff happened with the family and we moved back to New York and um still rode like steers but wasn't I actually my brother was tri- like he had to do a whip act to kind of help pay for our way to the rodeos and uh and I did a little roman riding act with um a clown actually I'm kidding yeah I didn't know yeah. Yeah, this this dude has done it all. He's done it all. I missed that part. <laughs> yeah, at one of them it was at uh the New York State Fair and I was doing the clown act and which I was just like the little beginning of it, you know, but yeah. well, these little ponies started going around there and I couldn't get them mowed up and I came off the side of them and it was at the biggest one, but the clown he sold it good, so <laughs> right. that's all that mattered. But uh uh so from there like um So my mom bought us two ponies, and uh, they were both little paint ponies, and uh, I had Roman riding pads for them. The one was real young, and the the other one was old, so they weren't really a good pair. Well, probably a couple weeks before I got my Roman riding pads, my Uncle Kenny sent me two bareback riggings. He sent me one and my brother one, just little pony riggings. And we had a buck and shoot at my grandpa's house, and... um, we put them on in there, and we would buck them all the time. And we'd put our bull rope on the pony and just have, like, a rope and just flank <laughs> it out back there. And uh, so I guess me and my brother, we've just always been kind of trying to get stuff to buck um, for a while now. <laughs> so <laughs> Trying to get stuff to buck. <laughs> so there's this, like, there's this, like, little thing that, like, that people have that guys, like, you know, everybody at this table, essentially. But we – you know, I don't know. It's like this desire to have adrenaline course through your veins. Oh, you know. And yeah. so, like yeah. I was when I was on the Marcus Latrell podcast, I was telling him about uh, we did the uh, what are those things called that we put on knocker balls? The knocker balls. You know, the knocker yeah. balls, and you see guys get in the arena. Yeah. Well, like we ordered them on Amazon, and uh, but they were like half the size of like the normal size knocker balls that you see in all those videos. Like the, the normal ones, they'll go like down to people's ankles. Yeah. Like there's, there's very little, you know, you're, you're not going to get hurt. Right. Hypothetically. Well, these like came down to like mid sh- thigh, like <laughs> they're going to protect your upper body. Just so just we to make a hinge for your knee to for, go sideways. Exactly. So <laughs> we, we, we get these knocker balls, we get them out, we blow them up. We put them on, and we realize, oh, my God. Well, we got a fighting bull. Cody Webster brought us a fighting cow. And, like, she's a real there. One. A real one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's not just a hot No, it's one, not bull. one of your ponies yeah. trying to get to, <laughs> so, to buck. We, we got these knocker balls, and we were like, we looked at them. We were like, 
I will do it anyway. <laughs> and Marcus Luttrell, lone survivor, interrupted me. And he was like, whoa, 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 that right there. Don't ever lose that. <laughs> and I, immediately yeah. I was like, this man gets it. And, of course, he gets it. He's yeah. a dang Navy SEAL. Right. But there's that little bit of, like, on the edge of danger. You know yep. what I'm saying? Like, uh, just, just like you're striving for, like, that thrill. Mm. And, like, that's one thing I've identified, like, in, like, Rodeo Cowboys, specifically Rough Stock. Like, they want that little thing. Like, you hear a lot of stories about Rough Stock riders who get hurt doing other things. For instance, right. Tilden Hooper broke yep. his collarbone on a mini dirt bike. Yep. Right before, like, a big rodeo. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, I hate to interrupt. I just, I, I think that if you're out there and you're like, I really want a rodeo, and you've got that little thing about you that it's just like, well, because if you've got the opposite where it's like, no, 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 I'm not even going to think about doing this or that thing because it might be dangerous. You may not be cut out to be a bull rider. Yeah, well, <clears throat> this morning, so there's a big, big storm, and Dalen drove through, and he had quite a drive this morning. And, and so it, it delayed him, and we were standing around, and Dale's like, oh, you want to see my new Can-Am? Shiny, <laughs> clean. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, we'll hop in. And we spent 30 minutes trying to tip it over in the mud. <laughs> well, <laughs> before we did that, I went down Tack Road. It's the 70, road I jog on. 70 miles an hour. 70 miles an <laughs> hour we road. got this son oh, of a gun up to. So that's what we're doing while we're sitting around waiting for you <laughs> That's why I'm all here. muddy. <laughs> so anyways... Back to Dalen's story. Back to Dan's story. But I just wanted to... So welcome. To, you're, you're among family is what yeah, he's trying to say. Yeah. I wanted to identify, like, even as a little kid, you are... You're hungry for yes. it. You're putting a bull rope on a mini pony. On a mini and, pony. And putting a flank on him. It's probably just you and your brother, right? Yeah. There's nobody else out there. Yeah, one, one, but, one buddy, but yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So, anyhow, I didn't mean to interrupt for nine minutes. Take over. Um, but, uh... Yeah, I got to get my train of thought going again. So but you're, you're bucking these mini ponies. You're putting bareback riggings <laughs> Any, on them. And no, anything little buck, he said. Yeah. Trying to get anything to buck. <laughs> <clears throat> then we had some little Jersey bottle calves. We raised those up, and we got some pictures with them. But So then from, kind of from there, um, then we kind of started. I quit kind of doing the Roman riding deal. My brother was still doing the whips, but he'd still ride and stuff. And um, Then, like, the ponies just weren't really – which we had one pony. He was a one-eyed pony. He would turn back, and he'd, he'd get it. But that was the only one that would buck. So then we started. Um, my mom got remarried, and we got adopted and stuff. And uh, when that happened, he was a stock contractor, Sam. And uh, so then he had a rodeo company, so when we were always around it. Uh, and in the Northeast, we lacked a lot of horse riders. Yeah. So me and my brother would. The pony wasn't really working out. Like, it wasn't helping us to be become better bareback riders or saddlebunk riders. Uh, so we started getting on steers, and that's kind of when the steers started coming to be a thing. And we had some really good, like, we had some good steers that would go out there and jump kick. Like, it took a handful to find them. But, um, so then we started putting bareback riggins and steer and and saddles on steers. And, uh, and then I was still riding bulls and stuff and steers and stuff. And then, um, did that throughout high school and stuff and then went to college and rode all three in college and so so um when did you get on your first bull though um so i had this little bull his name was carmelo four four seventeen, uh and he was just a good one i probably got on him i don't know i was probably like 15 or 16 so so pretty much all throughout you're pretty much you're you're getting on anything yeah, yeah. there's there's it's not you weren't necessarily like at 12 13 14 like i'm gonna be a bareback rider you're just rodeoing yeah that is my exact mm -hmm. my exact story so yep. anyhow um college rodeo same thing like coaches like because it's all about points. Yeah. In college rodeo, you can only have six people on the team. But there's no limit to how many events any of those six people do. So as a college rodeo coach, if you have someone like Dalen yep. who is really good at um, one event and then can is really good at two or three, well, that's just a jackpot. But even if somebody's good at one event and then they're just okay at yeah. the others. Can at least enter and get much points. On the yeah. team all the time. Right. Yeah. So – how did it how did it work out for you guys in college? 
So right after um after right after the high school finals, I won the high school finals in the bareback riding, and then uh, I think I was in Big Sky Montana at a PBR, and I tore my knee up. So the first half of the college season, I didn't do nothing with. So it's really hard to make up ground in the horse riding. You know those 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 top cop couple guys don't fall off ever. <laughs> right. In the bull riding, you can catch up, and um, so that same year. I made the college finals in the bull riding, but not through the bull riding, just because the team, we had a good team, and that picked me up to take me to the college finals. And uh, But we we ended up winning the men's team, and um, it, was, it was pretty cool. What year was that? That was 19. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's the end. He's, just, he's saying 2019. That's not the beginning of a four-year, you know, not 19-something. <laughs> How old are you now, Valen? 22. 22 years old. My man, world champion at right. 22. What's the youngest PBR world champion? Um, I, I think it's probably going to be Jess. I don't know I was how old say, he was. He was, because I, he was in our booth like that afternoon, and it, I w- want to say he was 21. Somewhere in there. Yeah. Just barely. I, I want to, I know that there's been like 19 year olds win the world in rodeo. Yeah. But. Um, I didn't know about PBR. Well, there haven't been many that young. Yeah, I well, I'm, I was thinking bronc riding. Wasn't Taos Muncie 19 when he won the bronc riding? Well, World? I mean, in PBR, they haven't been that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, there's probably not been that many actually in pro rodeo either. But yeah. <laughs> that's pretty That's pretty young. To You're kind of, I don't know. That that that's a really successful like like start, you know, like it's almost hard for guys not to compare themselves. You know, like I hear a lot of people, yeah. they'll be like as young as fourteen, fifteen, sixteen years old, yeah, people will message me and ask me if they're too old to get started <laughs> rodeoing. And it really frustrates <laughs> me. Like one time I just said, Yes, you are. Go ahead and quit now. This kid was like fifteen. Yeah. I had to because I was just I was like, why are you even asking me that? You need just go to McDonald's, but start learning how to fry French fries. You're done. I, I went back and told him, No, you're not. Give up on your dreams. But the the reason he's asking, the reason he's asking is because he's got a handful of friends that are eleven, twelve, thirteen right. and they're riding better than he is. Yep. And and there's a they, lot of people he's got out a, there. Got a Dalen out there. He's looking at exactly. There's a lot of people out there that might be 22, 3, 4, 5, who have maybe maybe they're 25, 26, yeah. and they they just started, and they see somebody like Dalen at 22. Yeah, you might have set the bar a little high for a few young guys. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, what kind of advice might you give to somebody who's who's got a little bit of yeah? Because my deal was, I told them like. It can happen once you start getting on. Like it can happen for you in a couple of years in the bull riding. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is just getting on. I mean, there's so many bulls to get on. You just kind of got to pick and choose. Like I got on the bulls that I was supposed to get on when I was young, and like I didn't get killed off or like people. So often they'll just get on, get on, get on, and like not get on with a purpose. So you have to have a purpose every time you get on, but like, mm. um, <laughs> not getting on stuff that. Stuff that's kind of somewhat in your category, or at least not super powerful, if it does really buck. You said your your stepdad was contractor, right? Yeah. Did he did he teach you that? How where did you learn as a young person how to pick your bulls? Yeah, well, he he really picked most of my bulls that I got on. Okay. When I was younger, and then well, that um, makes a lot of difference. Yeah, like I mean, you're playing smart. Yeah. Yes. Well, I didn't. I wanted to just go and rodeo everywhere I could, right. but I was. Also working, uh, which I do a lot for my dad and stuff and mm-hmm. for the rodeo company, and and we needed to fill those. He was producing a rodeo, and I was learning how to ride. So it worked out really good because I could get on every day in one or two events and keep getting better, and he's picking what I'm getting on. So yeah. my old man put on rodeos, got to get on a lot, you know, one thing for me personally was it gave me kind of a bad taste about production. So I pers- I know that I know that I know that I know that I don't want to put on rodeos. Yeah. Now I'll take bulls to one. Like if 
if JB and I, if JB, you know, was like, hey, let's go over here, like, I'll take bulls to it. That's fun. I'll take bucking horses. I might help shoot boss. But as far as full-on production and, like, I'm working for the stock contractor, like, I'm, I'm probably not going to sign up for that job. How do you feel about it? Yeah, so in the north, like, in New York and, like, the northeast where we put on rodeos, like, we had to carry, we carried, in, we had two arenas on the road, and so we'd have to set up, tear down, and yeah, I didn't want to be a part of a production. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. down here, it's pretty nice. You can pull in, unload your stock. I mean, the production's still hard, but you don't have to set everything up every weekend right. and e- week out. And I mean, we rodeo every weekend down here. Yeah, it's e- every yeah, it's, town. Yeah, yeah, everywhere. It's ready to go all the time. But yeah. in New York, you know, it's got to be a rare event. Yeah, no, well, no, like there's ro- there's Isn't a lot it? more rodeos than you think up there. Really? Yeah. I mean, there's not like you can't. I mean, in the summertime you can go. In the winter time, there's nothing pretty much to go to. Yeah. So that was a big eye opener when I when I first started. Um, like I thought, five thousand added rodeo was a big rodeo, and then then here I am trying to make the NFR, and I'm like, man, I can't even go to a five thousand added mo- and really make money. Right. And uh, so it was a big eye opener. But I mean, there's a lot of rodeos to go to up there, just on a smaller scale, and. Um, mm. Did did uh, did Sam like kind of respect that for you and and let you go down just the contestant route or did you still have to as you're a contestant did you you know when you're hanging around his rodeos were you having to wear both hats like production and I'm gonna work on riding yeah no towards like once I started getting more competitive I kind then I kind of I might have to do a couple things but not not too much. Cause I would like I remember like getting on, getting on stock. Like I would get on bulls like wearing clown paint. Yeah. <laughs> like I got on a bull once. <laughs> like, like I had sh- like my baggies. Like not not my baggies, but like my shorts that go under them. And then I just put my and and like I'm in my bull riding my my bull fighting vest on a bull. And then they would, you know, run me either first or last, but typically last that way in case I got hurt at the beginning, they, you know, because <laughs> he wanted to have a bullfighter. Yeah. Anyway. You can't lose a bullfighter. Right. So, like, <laughs> that's why, I like, there's little things like that that I just, like, ugh. You know, like, when I think about it, for instance, yeah. uh, feedlots. You know, like, <laughs> that's a good, that's a decent job. If you wanted to, like, learn how to cowboy, it's kind of like wheat pasture. Like, wheat pasture cattle, you're going to do a lot of roping. Oh, you're going to cowboy. Feedlots. <laughs> like, yeah. you're going to do a lot of sorting. You're going to ride through pins. You yep. learn how to identify. Or you work on, you know, um, on a processing crew. You learn all that. Well, like, I experienced it at age of 14 on the graveyard shift. We processed cattle all night. I'm 14 years old. So, like, my... In the back of my head, the mental model I have of a feedlot for me is just like literally like, ugh. <laughs> you know, but it's a good and same thing with production. You know, it's yeah. just like from my life experience, those are two things I'd rather not do, but they are like super valuable parts of the industry, you know, Absolutely. that somebody else Essential. might love if they don't have the same anyhow. Um Yeah, Dalen, you now you raise you raise bulls. Yeah, well I got more commercial cattle now but i did raise some bulls and like that's kind of like i would i went to drome davis's a lot of his schools and you know going down there and hanging out with drome tiffany like i always love bucking bulls and um which i i still raise a couple but not near as many because they got out last year and i just got tired of it because i wasn't there and somebody else had to chase them in at two in the morning and um but kind of that's uh so i took a a bull to the PBR finals twice, uh, nice. Roman. And that was kind of a big eye opener wow. for me being yeah. from the Northeast, like not seeing a lot of these guys. Um, and then going and being behind the buck and shoots and kind of seeing what they did before. Right. Um, so that was pretty cool. That's so, a, that's the thing. I mean, like, like you, it, it's a lot like how you grew up. He's seen every part of this, yeah. every part of it. <clears throat> so one of the parts and, uh, bareback riding so you you didn't just kind of ride bareback courses like you you like you went to some pro rodeos and some big ones right like you got on like some you got on some stout bareback courses it wasn't just a hobby for you 
Right. Is that true? Yeah. Like my last pro rodeo was pro, was Reno. Uh, well, the Reno short round was my last one that I entered just because I wasn't getting up right and and it was a good thing I quit entering after that one because I just that horse jerked that guy. <laughs> when he when he says he wasn't getting up right, um, what he's talking about he's not talking about his actual riding in the PRCA. It's really tough to enter multiple events. Matter of fact, when you know you can buddy, so you can have a four man buddy group. So if four people want to ride bulls together, they can all buddy. And if you ask for Saturday night, they may not give you Saturday night, but they're gonna move all four of you to Friday night. So at least you're still going together. Well, if you're gonna enter, if one of those four is gonna enter a, a second event, you can't you can't buddy with four people. You can only buddy with one other person. So if Dalen was gonna enter bears and bulls, he could he could buddy with someone, but only one somebody. And so it would be like the guy could either ride bears or bulls, or you could both ride them both together. But it'd be like then you cross event buddy, and or and you and you also would have to cross event buddy with yeah, yourself. There's a lot to it. <laughs> there's a lot to it, but yeah. and and it's tricky for them too because it's an automated program. They're doing it at random. That way it's you know that way it's not biased and they're not you know people don't get mad. But essentially they're trying to put you know this algorithm together. To mm-hmm. where people spread the the numbers out, because if forty seven people ask for Saturday and three ask for Friday, well, they can't put forty seven out yep. on Saturday. Mm-hmm. So they're going to put fifteen out on Saturday. Some of those will get drawn out, and they'll put fifteen on Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, so what Dalen's saying is, and correct me if I'm wrong, but as he's trying to make the NFR yeah. in the bull riding, his bareback riding is getting you put out on different nights of the rodeos and now all of a sudden you can't go to other ones you're doubled up were you traveling with someone um i traveled with kind of a couple of different people until like later in the year i started traveling with jc mortensen uh-huh. which he did he did we both did bareback riding and bull riding when we planned to travel together but then it wasn't we both quit riding barebacks and just focused on the bull run um so i got on bareback horses for a little bit I don't like to call myself a bareback rider, but um, Tilden and Casey gave me permission to call myself a bareback rider because I got on a uh, medicine woman oh, yeah. in a bareback rigging. I got on uh, cool water, which is like a eliminator. Um, but one thing I learned about after I got on a bareback horse, if I was going to get on a bronc and a bull at that same rodeo, like – I mean, as soon as my feet hit the ground uh, after this bareback ride, I would have this sense of relief, like, whew, that, the hard part's over, and now I can have fun. Yeah. And it, it, it made me ride better in the other events. Did you have any sort of – can you speak to that? Yeah, no, I kind of think I do because bareback riding was kind of like a warm-up for the bull riding. Or in, like, it was – if I was riding Bronx at a high school or a college rodeo, like – then it became kind of a like a workout because everything's run right close together and um, stuff. It's <laughs> really loud. Sorry, <laughs> I swear to God, he's right behind us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's gonna come through the wall. I'm so sorry, everybody. We started construction months ago, and this morning they decided to finally start. We got a world champion here. I know. I know. Thanks. Hey. Donnie, <laughs> could you maybe just ask them or tell them like that we're doing a podcast and maybe just like for like 30 minutes just not hammer on this wall? <laughs> Literally <laughs> the wall behind us. Yeah. <laughs> just tell them like 30, 40 minutes max. Like you can feel it through the floor. Yeah. And, <laughs> and remind them they've had three months. My listeners... <laughs> I, I promise, like, my listeners have a good attitude about it because our audio for the first 50 <laughs> podcast sucked. Yep. <laughs> it sounded like, I mean, like, it sounded like it was in a tin can. Um, yeah, the first podcast I did with you, um, it was the two of us, and there was nobody else in the room, and the cameras went dark halfway through. We didn't know. So he second half of the podcast when he posts it is just a picture of me. And then a picture of him, a picture of me, and a picture of him. Yeah. <laughs> For 30 minutes. <laughs> a who, little rough. <laughs> who was it that was in here? Oh, Derek Kobaba and Chase Outlaw did a podcast with them. Quit recording. 
yeah, had, that was had, had to use the, the camera room. audio. I was still in the other podcast room. William Clark Green, quit recording. This is terrible. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. Donnie's going to help us out. So the bareback riding for yes. you was a uh, warm up. Warm up. Um, did you like? How did you feel about it? Did you love it, bareback riding? I liked it when I got on like a nice horse, but I mean, it just kind of got like. Um, I think it kind of helped me like. I was always really moving my feet really good and everything, but on the some of them bulls, like I'd, I don't know, like kind of get like, I wouldn't say spur happy, but I wasn't controlling it, mm-hmm. and so, then, like probably my second year in PBR, that's when I really started had to control it because those bulls were getting so powerful, they were just like if I'd give them a little bit, they'd take a lot more than I was giving them. Yeah, and so that kind of. And I think if I would have just sharpened my bareback riding up a little bit, I think it would have been good, and maybe someday I'll crack back out. But <laughs> for the right now, I don't see it happening. Yeah, maybe when you retire from the PBR. <laughs> that was quitting riding bareback horses for me was, which people have on this podcast have heard me tell that story a bunch. Like, but it's the exact same thing. Like, I loved the hoppers. Yeah, I loved them. Yeah, you know, it felt great, but I did not enjoy the the um the eliminators and i think to be successful at an event you you have to be passionate about all aspects of it you can't dread getting on half the stock you know what i mean and so yeah. bronc riding and bull riding like those eliminators they did i didn't have that same dread you know like i i was i welcomed the challenge of it but a, an eliminator bareback Fear is what came <laughs> over me personally. Um, so you had a big year where you made every finals, right? Like every, like pretty much any finals that was in, it was the NFR, the Canada, the CN, you know, Canada finals, yeah, the college finals, and the PBR World finals, right? Yeah. Like, did you have to just ride? Like, did you how many, did you get on like two hundred head? I got on a bunch. I don't know how many it was, but it was it was definitely a bunch. <laughs> and I was getting on barebacks and Bronx and like in the beginning of it, uh, like at the at the college rodeos, and then a little bit up until Reno and the bareback riding. But it was definitely a lot of bulls. That's a lot of bulls. Yeah, so you're getting yeah, on multiple. Some- because some of those PBR events, you have to get on like sometimes up to four yeah. that weekend, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like a baseball player. He's out there every day, but he's on a bull. <laughs> so <laughs> I think it's, it's a little different. That's like a super professional mindset. Like for you to have to make that audible, I'm going to stop getting on bareback. I mean, it it just absol- absolutely paid off. Yeah, because I'm I'm going. I want to make the NFR, which you did. I want to make the PBR World Finals. You not only did that, but you're a world champ. Well, and you think about, you know, if you want to be good at anything, what do you got to do? You got to do it. Yeah. Right. A lot. A lot. And you'll get better. Got to obsess about over it. Even if you stink at it, if you keep doing it, you you got to get better. Can you speak to that? Like what it takes to be successful in bull riding as far as like being all in? Yeah, like, like a lot, like right in the shoot is like, with John's, like, I don't like spots, which I'm not saying anything about it, but, like, that's where I want to take the fight to him is right in there. And, like, if I'm letting somebody just help me out and, like, I feel like I got them, which some bulls I do get a spot if I know he's bad in there, but the majority of them I just would rather just do it. Like, that's where I want to take control of the situation right from the get-go so I can ha- – that's the one spot that I can control everything that I'm doing mm. out wow. there. I freaking love that. Right? Oh my gosh, I love that. I know. Uh, we got to put that, that gave, on a that t-shirt. That gave me chill bumps. I, seriously, me that too. gave me chill bumps. I, we got to put that on a t-shirt. Continue, <laughs> continue. But that like was, I, that I, was I'm, well said. <laughs> <laughs> Not good at talking, but I'm trying to be. <laughs> no, that's excellent. Yeah, but I just feel like a lot of people have fear right in there, and then they there's no way you can have fear right there and then continue to be successful once they turn out. You know, so like. That's just, I think the main start is right there. And and even for me, sometimes, like, if I take a little long in there, you know, then you're going to see it out there. Yep. So. 
Man. So you you get in that. That's your moment. Yeah. Like you get in. This is where it's all me. Does the crowd go away? Everybody. And it's like, it's just me and this bullet. I'm owning this moment. Yeah, for sure. And like, if somebody touches me, like, which I'm not a rude guy or anything, but I'll get like, I don't like to be touched. Like if somebody's touching me right here, that's not going to do anything besides just bother me. I don't like people. You're touch. completely <laughs> focused. Yeah. Wow. So this last weekend was Memorial Day weekend. I went over to uh, Decatur, the NRS, and did the uh, kind of helped promote the Danny Dietz Memorial. Danny Dietz was one of the Navy SEALs um, on the mountain with Marcus, and he he passed away. And so they do this memorial. Well, there's a couple other SEALs. There's there's a bunch of SEALs that come, uh, and got to meet a couple of them. DJ Shipley, um, and he uh, he's SEAL Team Six, f- formerly SEAL Team Six, which is like you know, the baddest of the band. Yeah. You know, the same SEAL Team 6 is who took out Osama bin Laden. Right. was on the Captain Phillips um, yep. rescue. And we, we uh, they did a, a little rodeo with it. And uh, Cullen Pickett, it was a permit deal. Cullen Pickett brought some bulls, brought some some bareback horses. It was just bears and bulls. But um, horses were, were just kind of some hoppers for these young guys. And then bulls were just good. And... We're back there behind the shoots, and Marcus is up there, and um, there's a few other seals, and then DJ is like locked in. He is recording every moment of every bull ride. He's putting them in slow motion, and he is just in, entranced with this. And afterwards, I talked to him about it, and we were, and he was talking about the similarities between them, like Navy seals going on like a mission, and he was like, "We know." And these helicopter pilots, they know, like, we're th- three minutes away from target. You know, or we're five, we're four, we're three minutes. You know, we're 30 seconds out. And he's like, we know as soon as we get there, we're going to be met with gunfire. Like, there will be a fight. It's not like they're getting prepared and maybe something will happen, maybe it won't. Nine times out of ten, they know the target, the enemy is there and they're going to get shot at. And he said, it's the same thing with you guys. Like, You've got this procedure you're going through, and you absolutely yep. know when the gate opens, you're going to yes. be met with a fight. Yes. Matter of fact, mm. if they don't fight, we get another one, yeah. a re-ride. <laughs> to, you know, like, all right, this one didn't fight enough, so yeah. you're going to get another one. And so <laughs> the anticipation, you know, the 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 workup, and it was really powerful for us because I had talked to the interns about shoot procedure and how they need to have, like, the same shoot procedure each time to get ready, to get their mind ready. Yeah. That way, and if they, if, because in their first 20, 30 bulls, you don't, you're messing up. You got a different shoot procedure here and there, like you're doing different things. Well, now all of a sudden you're worried about your shoot procedure and you're not thinking about the fight. Well, when you're where Dalen's at, you've been doing it for 15 years. Well, you got a pretty good shoot procedure. You don't have to worry about your shoot procedure. You're thinking about the fight. Yeah. Um, So, yes. So, what in psychology, they, this is he's describing what they call a flow state when you are so in tune with the moment and your central nervous system is so uh, dialed in to focus on what's happening you can hear almost hear your breath your heartbeat and you you know i what i want to ask is is this something that came to you when you were growing up and you realized you could focus like this or is this something you developed later in your life as a professional when you started dialing things in that was did, you, my did you have question. that feeling i was gonna ask the same thing early on yeah i think kind of like you're saying at the, at the rodeos you were, you were always busy working and riding and i feel like i was kind of the same way so my mind was never thinking there so then when i quit working at the rodeos and i was just riding i had to figure out i had to have a routine because i wasn't just running back and forth there was a lot right. more time for thinking thoughts going in my head so that's when I started having to make a routine and like when I pack my bag I can explain how my bag's packed like everything is always the same you know Mm -hmm. with a couple little variables in there right um but like my warm-up's the same everything's the same how I get ready it's all kind of in the same time frame and and I think it's because I'm trying I'm leading my body up to getting ready to get on that bull and it and it knows that as we get closer as my steps get there, I guess. 
Yeah, I was talking to one of the interns. Like they were talking, we were talking about how like at some point, and I remember early on, like felt like everything had to be just absolutely perfect leading up to you know like um, before I started taking energy drinks, for instance. Like I thought I had to have a nap because I'm like I'm not like super overly energetic by nature, you know. Like and so I'd be like, yeah, you're a little. I dull. felt like before I would, and I wasn't drinking any caffeine throughout the day. So I would ride better if I had a, a nap in the afternoon, you know? And, um, and so I got to where like, man, I, I got to have this nap. Otherwise I'm not going to ride good. And then, uh, eventually I learned like, it doesn't have anything to do with, you know, like you can be tired. If you've got the right mindset, you could have not slept for two days. You could be sore. You could have a broken ankle. If you're, if you got control of your mind, your mind has control of your body. Yeah, and he brought up a point. You brought up a point. You were talking about how when you have the extra time and your your mind can go places. Yeah. And that happens to people and um where you get that distraction because you're you're allowing it, but you're not allowing it. You're like, "No, I'm I'm going to I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back here to the moment and be ready for this fight because you can't control everything. You can't control the gate, can't control the bull crowd whatever but you control dalen yeah and so that's what you focus on and, yeah and not get hung up on the other stuff so you can't control the rest of the stuff but you it sounds like you know that and so you focus on what you can control like you talking about your rigging bag being in a certain order and everything that you have under your control yeah like one of the bulls <laughs> at the pbr finals just like a couple weeks ago um he was kind of moving around in there. I don't know if somebody started working that slide. Well, that somehow the slide got all the way open, and luckily I didn't have my hand all the way in, and I wasn't tied in yet, so I could pull out real quick. But it kind of got me worked up for a second, and then I got to, had to bring, come back down and then go back at him at the in the beginning. But yeah, so how'd you do that? In that, so I kind of my kind of just got elevated for a little bit, and I was like, all right, I just got to come back down and <laughs> get so you, like you talk your way through it. Yeah, I just had to like. Yeah, I get. Yeah, I did on that yeah. time because it everything was happening so quick. Literally, that bull was in the middle shoot, and whoever somebody rolled them to the next shoot. Well, because it'd be real easy to say, "Oh, this isn't fair." Yeah, I'm. You know, I just got robbed, and 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 feel bad for yourself, and and start down that path. But you didn't have time for that. Yeah, yeah, and there was um, <coughs> which two of the bulls at the finals I wasn't supposed to actually have. The one got hurt, and then the other one didn't get on the trailer or wasn't there or something. Um, so I had a different bull. And so you just can't think about that. Like everything works out. Right. There's a reason for everything, you know? Right. Yeah. So you were talking about the fight starting early. Um, hey, will you tell everybody out there to be quiet now? <laughs> um, you talk in charge. Yeah. <laughs> thought he was in charge. <laughs> you talked about the fight starting, you know, in the shoot. And um, I feel like if, you know, like when a horse mashes me, for instance, you know, like I, I, it just pumps me up. You know, like I watch this. There's a, a documentary, documentary. Is that the, yeah. documentary? Documentary. Kind of deal. It's called Moon of the Desperados. <laughs> it was uh, like Jordy Thompson actually made it. It's got Leon Coffey and, and Gary LaFew. It was back in the day. It was in Calgary. They did a few interviews, but they, they had these little sequences where they were, like, showing some rides. And it was different angles at Calgary and uh, Leon's fighting bulls. And it, some of the old-timers, if I watch it with them, they can pick out all these random guys that, like, might have been, like, 24th in the world at the time but like had you know we're just anyway it's it's really neat to watch and it's super neat to watch with an old timer but there's this one shot of this bareback rider getting smashed i mean like you can barely see him in the corner of this shoot as this horse rears out and then as he jumps forward he still reaches up and gets his mark out yeah. and obviously gets a free roll we, you know the mark out rule is the first jump but if you get mashed in the process that the judges will say go ahead really loud and uh, that means you get a free roll. You don't have to have your mark out. Well, th it doesn't phase this guy. And I remember watching it as a kid and my old man explaining that to me. And uh, just the level of fight in his head, like, you know, it just didn't matter. And, and I've always admired that about guys. That's why whenever you said that about not wanting a spot and because the fight's already started, like, that's just, that's just, 
You know we're proven. Uh, that's another <clears throat> mentality. That's a, that's a SEAL Team 6 <clears throat> kind of mentality, you know? And like, you know this is a teaching moment because he's talking about it as we're being interrupted by your construction crew and your T-shirt crew, and we've got to get back on track and focus. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. So we're, we're all learning together right now. <laughs> Tell us about the finals, <laughs> the, the PBR World Finals. Yeah. Um, How many bulls do you have to get on? Uh, eight. I got an eight. I got to ask. Or I got a nine. <coughs> I got to run and rewrite in the beginning. I got to ask real quick. Was it different being in Fort Worth? Yeah, it was definitely different. Um, you know, you didn't walk down to your hotel and smell, you know, the, the casinos and everything like that. So it was a lot different. But um, I felt like it was like, it didn't, like last time when it was here, like in at the Cowboy Stadium, uh, it kind of felt like it was just kind of, temporary kind of deal but this like i felt like it felt like it was kind of like a home fans came back yeah this year yeah i felt like it was good do you feel like it kept you more like focused not being in vegas like with all the casino and the distractions like could you i mean i know there's like party spots in fort worth yeah like where i wouldn't say huh (laughs) yeah where where are they like in the stockyards (laughs) like you could go to the stockyards i guess if you wanted you know like there are places to go i guess yeah, no, I got during that. I I just kept my routines all the same and everything. But mm-hmm. I wouldn't say that it was more distractions, less distractions, or anything. But I just felt like it felt good. Uh, like felt like there was a lot of energy in the building. I felt like, and maybe that was just me. I was maybe I was just all pumped up. But <laughs> well, I could be part of it. Yeah, you came in at sit number two, correct? Number two in the world. Uh, start at the beginning of the finals. No, I think I come in first, then we left the, then I lost it, and then came, the yeah. second week I came back first, because I got yeah. it, I was come the Velocity Finals, I was coming in second. Oh, okay. At the did okay at the Velocity Finals, and then that moved me back up to Gotcha, first. gotcha. Yeah. So, what was it like performing under that kind of pressure, those last few bulls? Yeah, that was like the biggest pressure situation I've ever been in, you know, and, um, you know, I knew I had to make every bull count. And then that first bull, I really I let him get away from me um, on that re-ride bull. Uh, but then, like, I drafted good bulls. Um, and then that last bull, uh, I'm legit, too. Like, I don't know, we kind of have a really good history. It's pretty cool. Like, he was the first bull that I was ever, like, really high up. Like, I was 90, 91 on him first time I got on him and won uh, um, 15-15 on him and uh, then rode him earlier this year for 93 and a quarter or something like yeah I think I have my highest score on him and then I also won like that was kind of like my last ride of the to win uh, to win the world so dang that's a cool moment yeah right that's especially like being a bucker and like it's almost like the way you would want it yeah you know like I'm for it would be neat to be winning it way ahead, and you know that you could. But that's a cool. Yeah, no pressure. It's like, but he did. When you're watching the Super Bowl, it's pretty exciting to watch when they win in the last four seconds. You know, it may not be <laughs> yeah. as fun for Tom Brady, but it's fun <laughs> to watch. Um, yeah. So that's super exciting. What was? Give us like just your elevator pitch on what it was like. <clears throat> the difference between PBR World Finals and the NFR. Yeah. They're kind of like two different deals. Like, I love both of them. Um, I just don't like all the traveling that it takes to make the NFR. But, like, right. you know, when you go in, when you're riding that horse and you're going in that grand entry, it's just like there's so much energy in that building. It's like like you get excited, you know, them horses. Them horses are all probably really broke out anywhere else you ride them. But in there, you know, yeah. we're all pumped up. and Them horses can feel it. And, you know, like. Uh, so I, st- I switched horses like midway through the NFR. Kobe Radley got hurt, and he was riding a really good horse. And so I – and I knew that horse, they'd still bring it every day. Well, I rode it I think three times. I don't know if he came back and rode in the later rounds or not. But um, just the energy there is like, you know, the NFR – like I, the PBR finals in Vegas and the NFR in Vegas, like uh, – for the PBR finals, not many fan like there's fans there, but and they all know you and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, NFR, they none of the fans. Like I went to a luncheon with Cavenders, 
and she the one like we're at a luncheon and she's like oh you're here for the junior nfr like <laughs> <laughs> i was like <laughs> <laughs> you know like they just don't know but <laughs> <laughs> Must be this tall to ride the ride. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my gosh! And that was like not that long ago. Yeah, I know. And maybe you need to get like a little mustache going yeah. or something. Yeah, I think it just makes me look. It does make me look a little older. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh! I just can't grow it as thick as yeah. nice on the sides yeah. here. You know. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> man, you're a world champ. It's 2022, and it is early June. Mm-hmm. I know. <laughs> what are you going to do right? the rest what? of the year? Well, he got drafted for the team deal. Right. right? Let's talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm on the um, so I'm on the uh, Carolina Cowboys. Uh-huh. Um, which I'm pretty excited about that. I was the first draft. I was the first trade of the PBR draft. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. Um. Number but, three pick for the Texas Rattlers, yeah. which then got ra- later traded for the Carolina Cowboys. Yeah, me and Mason Taylor got traded uh, for Joao and Cody Jesus. Um, but that's pretty cool to be the first trade and you know in the, ever to the yeah. draft. And then, um, but I think we got a really good team. Um, we went to uh, we actually spent the w- last weekend in Charlotte at the race, and that was pretty cool to kind of see the race down in the pits um austin dillon's our uh uh general manager and then uh jerome is the coach and um i know jerome has helped me immensely in my career and i think it's just gonna get better and it works out good because i've already worked with him pretty much my whole life so right yeah when did you first start working with jerome uh i can't remember i i know i've been to like three or four school three a bunch of schools for him and i always call him you know um if I'm ever kind of just in a slump, like I feel like if I talk to Jerome, like it just kind of lifts me up a little oh, bit, man. you know. Um, There's nothing like having Jerome around. I I swear I don't complain about anything when Jerome's around. Yeah. He's the most one of the most motivating people I I get to spend time with. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, f- yeah. His his attitude. Yeah. His with everything the way he. Um. How many teams are there? Uh, eight teams, seven seven man rosters, and then there's a practice squad, and then there's like five. Five will be like the actual game. So we have at the table. Maybe were you the only girl? That was, yeah, that had declared for the draft. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, did you uh, did you know Jordan back in North Carolina? Any? Uh uh-uh, uh no. Y'all didn't see each other around no. much. I didn't start riding until I was seventeen, so you, just, gotcha. you were probably up in New York. Yeah. I mean. Oh, gotcha. I see. Um so you went to what was it called? The, the Combine? Mm hmm. In Pueblo. They did like uh I think it was three or four days. They did like some testing, like mental testing, physical testing, and then we got on a bull. Um but yeah, I rode rode my bull out there, which I was kind of surprised about. But because he bucked, yeah, he was pretty good. Why were you surprised? <laughs> I don't yeah, know. I don't know. Because well, I guess it's because like who who knew they would buck? Yeah, yeah. well, because like I mean, really up until that point, after like having my knee surgery this oh, past that's year, right. like I hadn't really been on anything like yeah. since then. Like because this time last year, I had just had maybe the first. No, I hadn't even had the first knee surgery. Yet, yeah, because I broke my arm. Getting bucked off that horse. Surgery on that. Yeah, yeah I had to have surgery on that. There's been, you know, uh, have you had more than me in the last How many surgeries years? have you had, Jordan? <laughs> Total? Total. I think surgery. 12. 12 surgeries. <laughs> How many <laughs> surgeries have you had, Dalen? I don't think 12. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. So, yeah, so I rode my bull, which I was kind of surprised about because, like, I hadn't been mm. getting on, but, like, jump kickers at that point. The first, like, so I came back, for, I had... Tore my knee up, ACL, MCL, meniscus, all that fun stuff twice. This was my second time. That's doing pretty it. much everything that's in there. Yeah. Well, you the got your PCL thing. and your LCL. I left those ones alone. <laughs> okay. Hey. Jordan's like, there's a couple more, and I they're got a fine. couple of good ones. Yeah, they are good. They're strong. So I had like the first, I think, twelve <laughs> or fifteen bulls I'd gotten on after, like coming back. I got on only in tennis shoes because I was too afraid to use my spurs. 
like to pull on my knees. So like, I mean, they were just little jump kickers. So yeah. like, I really hadn't been on much before going to that. And then I went and I actually had a coach's meeting with um, Oklahoma Freedom. And they were like, you probably just should like declare. And I was like, okay, that's fine. Yeah. So I did, but. um, So did you go to the draft mm-hmm. they had? Yeah, or? I went because um, one of the guys that's helped me, Vinny, was out there. So I went and hung out with him, wanted to see it. I mean, why not go? Um, there were, so what are the guys that didn't get picked? What are they going to do the second mm-hmm. half of the season? Yeah. So there's like touring pros and like velocities, but they're called like challenge, the challenger tours and they can go to them. I just don't think they have like, they don't have priority to get into them. Um, so like the, the five guys, they don't have to go to them. And then the, there's a seven, eight, and then there's a three man practice squad. So there's five guys on the team that the coach could send there to kind of work their way to getting on the team. Um, gotcha. And there'll be a finals for that. And there, there's a lot of money. There's a lot of bull runs. Well, too, to go with, to. with the team stuff, like, didn't they say, like, the rosters, like, they can change their rosters, like, Tuesday up, like, the Tuesday before the event. So, like, they could bump up practice riders and stuff like that pretty regularly yeah i think so i think um they can't be they can't change until they've went to two events or something like that Mm -hmm. Um, but once they go to two events they can change practice guys can move up to be like starters for the next event yeah Yeah. where where and when is the team finals what do they call it um the team finals is in vegas oh it's in vegas yeah in november yeah it's the first weekend in november oh I thought I didn't. I, th- I thought that was in Texas, also. Yeah, uh-huh. I missed that myself. Huh. So, <coughs> I'm I'm assuming, as a young uh, bull rider, rodeo cowboy in North Carolina, uh, watching JB was was that pretty influential for you? Oh yeah, for sure. And um, one time at Circle K, I you know I got on this. It was at the time the biggest bull I've been on, and he jerked me down face mask came off my helmet uh and jb was there you know so it's kind of it's it's cool you know <laughs> i didn't do very good but i still got to see him talk to him um but, so yeah. what was it like seeing and talk to him then and then have you have you been around him at i guess you would have maybe been around him at rodeos did you get to be around him at event at pbr events yeah when i first started going to the pbrs he was going once he started rodeoing, I wasn't I wasn't rodeoing anymore, really. Uh, but we've I've kind of been around him here and there. Uh, I went and hung out hung out with him, and because uh, he was like when they did the team deal, like when the COVID hit and the PBR did the team deal in Vegas, he was I don't know our, he was our coach, and yeah. so me and Andrew went down there and hung out with him, and um, so it was really cool. And then you got on some of his did you maybe practice bulls or something? Didn't you go over there? Yeah, it wasn't his around? practice bulls, but it was somewhere down. He was there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I remember. I was talking to him one day, and he was he was saying you were there. Yeah. Um, Where was this? I don't remember. I just remember him talking about it. It was like maybe a, a year ago or something. Yeah, somewhere around Stephenville. Yeah. No, oh, okay. it was in uh, Altus or somewhere way down there. And, um. He was driving. I just remember him talking okay. about Dalen. Um, cool. So that was probably pretty pretty neat to watch him growing up. There was something I was going to ask you about that. Did you ever see him at stands? Was he still going to stands a lot when you? He he was there a couple times, like when I was younger, and I would watch him. Um, but I kind of don't have suit. But I I remember one of his bull rides, but that's the only one I remember. Did Jerome make you uh, weed eat like he did with JB? Uh, no, I didn't JB do no weed. <laughs> he had to weed eat the whole thing before Jerome's rodeo, and then he gave him a hat. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that story when we play, you guys were playing cards? No. It's like he, I was weed eating all day long, and he said, go on in there and get you a hat. <laughs> <laughs> Not even like a cowboy hat or anything. No. Yeah, well, out of the gift shop. Uh, <laughs> do you get on a lot of practice bulls? 
I don't really get on a bunch of practice bulls. I, I feel like in these last couple of months, I've rode a lot more horses, um, been riding more bareback and just riding horses in general more. Um, and I feel like that's kind of helping me. And I'll get on some practice bulls when I'm in, like, when I need to, you know. Um, but I just, I'm, I feel like if we're going to get on a bull, we might as well go to a rodeo or something so the, and get paid for it. It helps you get tuned up for the bulls, the, the bareback? Just riding uh, horses bareback, just like, just the way they're moving underneath you. Know? I don't think he's talking about with a rigging. No, I'm not no. talking with a rigging. Oh, but just it, it's part of his his overall, you know, how he prepares right, right. over the year. So you, I mean, you mix it up. Yeah, like just kind of like I feel like, you know, just the way you can feel that animal, that horse moving underneath right. you is a big deal. And um, that bull that I took to the PBR finals, I can actually just go and hop on him. So I go out and sit on him every now and then, and I mean it's a big difference from a horse to a bull, um, but just kind of the way they move and stuff. He's that gentle. He's pretty. He's pretty gentle. You can now. just jump on him in the pen. Yeah, he. That's he, cool. You kind of got to pet him sometimes. If you don't get to petting him, yeah. then he'll kind of start moving. And yeah, uh, the biggest deal is when he starts throwing his head back. Like yeah. he's got some power. He's probably just trying to get the flies off. But <laughs> I know, I know, I know it's. I know it's probably. Yeah. yeah, I'm a big yeah. fly. <laughs> we had uh, 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 one of Randy's bulls, his family, they raised him. Um, like, what was that bull out of? Playboy or something like that? I don't know. Who de- I don't remember. Had some pretty bad of the bone, you know, lineage. But anyhow, we called him Baxter, and he uh, he was super gentle like that. He was just too gentle. Like, he was playful, you know, and he would kind of come after you a little bit. Like, like he would want to play a little <laughs> But you can sit on his back, but he got to – we did it so much, he got to where he would kind of start jumping around at the end. But he was pretty fun. And then he would he would, he would would buck. Um, you think he could you sit on him. Tony? Maybe. He's pretty gentle now. Tony is maybe the best practice bull <laughs> – I know, he's the best practice bull I've ever owned. Yeah, he's pretty cool. I don't cool. know if you've seen videos of this. It's a little <laughs> muley tiger stripe that we call Tony the Tiger. But he uh, – He's a pretty – he's going to make bull riders out of these interns for sure. I got a I got a horse like that coming too. The practice horses are a lot harder to find, you know. Oh, yeah. I was explaining it to one of the interns last night um, because, uh, you know, a lot of those horses, whenever they are um, – whenever they're a weaker bucking horse, they still run. Mm. And so they're going yeah. fast. They're high off the ground. And, yeah, they may not buck that hard but they're going to run. Um, so it's hard to find a weak horse that will buck slow. You know, and when you do, they're priceless for, for a guy starting out. And so we've got right. one. Uh, it's uh, Her name is Golden Gun and a Stay Smith horse. And I've been on two of her, you know, half brothers and sisters, Hammer Cocked and Grab Your Gun. And they're great bucking horses. Um, bought this one from... Toby Collins, he's an Australian bull rider. Yeah. And uh, he, he's actually getting better at bull riding, kind of like you. He kind of is slowing down his horse riding, so he sold me this practice horse. The first day, not even been here 12 hours. I was wondering why Jordan was laughing when he told the story. cuts her <laughs> yeah. butt open on, like, the one T-post I have on this whole place. Oh I have almost God. eradicated the, where the, the horses live. Yeah. I've almost eradicated the t post. But she finds this one and on does oh. sit on it. I mean, cuts her butt open. So she's oh out God. for a month. It would probably be around 4th of July before she's ready to go. But um, She had stitches, but mm. she had tore the bottom half of them, so it wasn't healing down. So we actually just cut off the flap yesterday. The vet came out, cut the flap off. So Jordan is like a – she's got a little text group with like, Salt Creek Animal Vet Clinic, and, like, <laughs> she knows all the vets there. Dollar got bit by a rattlesnake twice, almost died. Yeah, she I remember saved that. his life. You I saved got, you saved Dollar? Oh, yeah. man. Oh, yeah, and he's thriving. Yeah. Not only has he, like, lived through this, like, getting bit by a rattlesnake twice, but this mother trucker will run away from you now. Like, his, he's just happy. Like, Thanks to Total Feeds. Yeah. He's going to live till he's 45. Darn yeah. right. This dang old man won't <laughs> yeah, <laughs> send he, a thank uh, you note to my dad. Won't kick the bucket. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have this horse, Dollar. He's like my oldest horse. I got him when he was two, and I was 14. 
And so it was like the first horse I trained, took him to Craig Cameron's, learned how to train horses while I was training this horse. I do not suggest learning to train horses like that, <laughs> but that's what I did. Probably when he was like four, maybe five, just showed up one day lame and has been lame ever since. So long freaking time I've had this horse, just been feeding him. Yeah. Um, that's why, I like, when people talk about how we don't care about our animals, I just shake my head. I don't want to explain the story about Dollar, but, like, I would have sent this rascal to Mexico a long time ago if I don't care about animals. But, no. No, that's... Total feeds. Well, he's going to keep him alive till he's 60. <laughs> yeah. he's I was going to say, that's how you and I got together, because you cared so much for your animals. It wasn't... you found us. I was given... I started feeding Total Feeds <laughs> not because of Dollar. No, no. offense, Dollar. But because of Boone. Boone who uh, he's now 22, mm -hmm. but at the time he was 15. Um, and I had a horse get crippled. I was doctoring yearlings here, had a horse get crippled. And like on big days, I need two horses. And so I was down to just Boone. Mm -hmm. Boone could not handle a full day of roping yearlings. I mean, three yearlings and he's done. Partly because it takes me eight loops per calf <laughs> yes so but regardless <laughs> can't get the job done on boone and a job like that you can't do it a foot and so um i had to switch boone's feed because he was in the rotation you know and i switched him over to total feeds and it, it just made an absolute game changer of the horse and he's but, still oh, he's, he's a great horse we i picked up on him like two days ago he's I mean, still if there's any any horse that's worth saving it's boone yeah boone yeah <laughs> He's 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 the poster child of of total feeds at least for us around this outfit. So right, yeah, they all look really good right now too. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and then Dollar, we had him in a corner pin behind the round pin. Mm -hmm. and my round pin is solid cedar stays, and so I didn't really go back there for Might a be little. The smallest while. round pin I've ever seen. Forty foot. I'm just. <laughs> it's forty foot. A little, little snug. <laughs> Joe is kind of in charge of the feed program, and I go back there, and Dollar looks like a tank. I'm telling you, like, he looks like one of the bucking horses. Yeah. And I was like, what is, well, I've been feeding him like 15 pounds. <laughs> because he doesn't winter well, and so mm -hmm. I told her, I was like, and he doesn't have any teeth, so there's no point in turning him out. Right. And, you know, like, he, he's not, he's just going to drop the grass, so you might as well keep him in the pen. Well, with total feeds, you can do eight pounds, and then you don't have to feed hay. Yep. Or if you want him to gain weight, you can go more yeah, than Dale's that. Dalen's nodding. He knows this. Oh, yeah. His mom was a dealer So in New York. I tell Joe, and then I forgot I told Joe. Well, she didn't back off because I told her. So, like, <laughs> this dude looks like a like he's ready to pull bulls out of the arena with Derek yeah. Begay on his back. <laughs> yeah, he looked really good. So, anyways, we scaled him back down to eight pounds. But um, you've been feeding it, Dalen? Yeah, I've just been... Um, just feeding it to them couple of bulls that I got, but yeah, 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 it's pretty effective. JB feeds it. Yeah, are those yeah, your only two bull riders? We met but, or uh, three, me, Dalen, JB. That's a pretty good lineup. Yeah, it's a pretty <laughs> solid lineup. Well, and Jerome, Jerome, that's Jerome right, Jerome Davis. Let's not forget. Let's not forget. Yeah, so so Dalen's my third world official world champion bull rider, but I um. It was your mom. She was a dealer yeah. in New York. <clears throat> Came to the NFR with you, uh, I don't know, four, four years ago maybe? Uh, yeah, five. And, yeah, and, and showed up at the booth. We don't, when we love that. That's what, you know, we've got the booth there. We love it when the dealers, they come from all over the NFR, and they come to meet uh, Dad, and she was excited to meet Dad. And um, had two boys, you and her brother. Yeah. And my dad got all excited, and, and she's telling him about and these boys, and they're like, well, I want to do an interview with Dalen. And Dalen pushes his brother <laughs> from him, like, maybe you should talk to my brother instead. <laughs> he wouldn't He wouldn't do the interview with my dad. Oh, you were, you were nervous about it? He's he's come a long way. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't. <laughs> I think I did end up doing it, but I'm not the best with talking. <laughs> but I've gotten a lot better. If you, uh, You've done great here. Like, I think you're the only one that thinks you're not great at it because, like, we would have – had you not said oh, that, it would have yeah. never crossed our minds. Yeah. I know that. I, that's why I'm bringing up the story now. After we <laughs> talked yeah. for, if an he hour was now. actually not good at talking, you wouldn't have brought that up. No, yeah. no, no. And if I would have said it in the beginning, it would have been like, 
Uh, he would have shut shows. me down for the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got to do a lot of PR for PBR, huh? Yeah. 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 Like they mandatory. Have you out doing doing this stuff? Yeah, doing a little bit. Um, <laughs> just kind of depends. Like New York, I always do a bunch, like in New York City. But um, I know the first place I did my interviews, um, like it was like, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Yeah, yeah that, you're not that's sure all. Today, right? <laughs> that's all it was. So. Yeah. Yeah, you oh, don't. You're saying it. You were just saying yes and no. Yeah, I got up there on uh, Sunday, and um, Matt Wesley came up to me and he said, "Hey, I'm gonna need a little bit more than yes, sir, <laughs> no, sir." <laughs> I was like, "I'll try." Yeah, it's it's not like like Matt can't carry a conversation. But he's like, "I'm not carrying all of it." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you have to step up. But you know, it's just like bull riding or anything else. Your first your first ten outs aren't aren't your best. <laughs> Well, like you get mine better. were pretty good, but for a normal <laughs> man, I understand what you're saying for a normal person. No, it's like anything else. You know, when we did it, uh, like dad putting him on TV, uh, gosh, it's been 12, 14 years, but I still have some of those early ones around. They're, they're hard to watch. You know, when you get started, my early videos, shooting video, they stink. Yeah. I mean, they do, but you got to get through that. Yeah. You got to get through the rough and, and you get better at everything. So... Speaking of spokesperson, Jordan, you're kind of the spokesperson for female bull riders. Yeah, I guess. But we did a video, we did a rodeo time. I don't remember the number. You might remember it, where it was it was kind of about you. It was after the Netflix show, and it was like we were and and you made some you made some points about female bull riding. Like, I don't remember all of it. I just caught a snippet of it, but it made me. Weren't you listening? Really? <gasps> well, I don't think he was there when we were filming it. Oh, so you'd have to have gone back and there's watched some. It. You have some frustrations about female bull riding. What are those? Yeah. So, like when I first started riding bulls, like I just had kind of done it as like mark it off my bucket list kind of thing. Like just like we didn't, you know, we didn't know anyone else that had done it. And you're, I, you were kind of that thrill seeker, like yeah. we were talking about. Yep. Oh yeah. I mean, after I had been doing crazy stuff, but like, and then when I started riding bulls I started doing even more crazier things but when I first started you know it was just kind of like a bucket list thing and I was like fell off really fast you know less than two seconds and I was like man like I know I can do this longer I'd been riding naughty hunter jumper horses my whole life and so like I just kept going back week after week but like nobody told me to take it slow like if they pointed out a bull like I was getting on it like mm. I got I mean I got hurt pretty bad like pretty early on and you know like some of the frustrations I have is like like I wanted to ride bulls so bad I just ended up crippling myself faster and like now girls don't want to even like they're not serious about it like they just want to get on like the yeah. jump kickers or the steers and be like call themselves bull riders I'm like dude I freaking did it like yeah. I got on stuff that I had no business getting I mean even guys my age that were at the same level as me didn't have any business getting on like mm. those were the kind of bulls that I was you know first starting to get on and then you know they just don't want to take it serious like they don't want to put the work in like I don't know it just it's it's like frustrating mm -hmm. which well, it happens in guys too yeah it like, does happen in guys but yeah one of the one of the points you made is that you feel like a lot of girls that are getting on bulls are doing it for attention and yeah. then it gives girl bull riding kind of a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths yeah because then like a lot of times like there was like one rodeo I entered out here in Texas and I drove from North Carolina to Texas to enter this bull riding like I'd called in it was one of those mm. bulls bands and barrels and I had gotten in as an alternate and I, they were like you should show up anyway well I had a women's bull riding the next day because like we had like we have this like small association so I was like all right cool like I'll go hit that show on Saturday and then on Sunday I'll go to the women's deal and drive home. Right. So I get there and like I was the th third alternate and two people had already called out and I knew a, a third was not coming. Like he had called me and said, hey, I'm not coming like you're going to get in. I was like, all right, cool. So I showed up to this bull riding and they were like, yeah, so like how old are you? And I was like, at that time I was 22. And so I was like, all right, cool, you know, like over 18 I get to ride and then they're like hold on we got to talk to some people and stuff like that and I was like all right well I sat around this place for an hour 
waiting for them to tell me that I was in. Well, then they like came up to me, like one of the judges came up to me. He was like, so uh, we can't let you ride. And I was like, well, why not? And they're like, oh, it's because you're a girl. And I was like, well, what what does that have to do with anything? Like, I could, I've got some videos if you want to see it. Like, mm-hmm. it's whatever, you know? And they're like, no, I think we're just going to. And I was fuming. Oh, <laughs> I was, man, I, I was you were so mad. I was mad. And I was like, all right, whatever. And I, one of the people from the, them had actually contacted me later. And I guess they had done a show or something like that before Bulls, Bands, and Barrels in Florida. And I guess a girl got hurt mm-hmm. and threw a big fit about it. And so they just kind of like wrote it off. <laughs> yeah. Like she got on for attention, like had no business getting on, kind of wrote, and they just kind of wrote it off. Well, then the next day, because I was so mad, I had the women's bull ride and then I went ahead and open, entered the men's open. So like, I was like, whatever, like <laughs> <laughs> wow. there's, there's 18 or there was like 17 <laughs> or 18 entered in the men's the next day. And I was like, yeah. well, sweet, that'll be a decent payday. Like if I ride my, both my bulls and yeah. Ronnie Kitchens was there and he had hauled bulls to that bulls bands and barrels. And at the beginning of it, he was like, man, I think the bulls would have been too much for you. And I said, well, to be honest with you, I wouldn't have known that cause I didn't get to try, you know, like right. I'm never, I, I didn't, wasn't going to know that because I didn't even get the opportunity to even to push myself to try it. So I rode my bull in the women's. I just got on the steer. He kind of made like a half round to the right and then ran down the pin. Well, then I got on this, uh, it was another steer, but he, he bucked like a bull. Like, he turned back right there around the right. So I won the men's open bull riding out of, like, 17 or 18 riders. And Ronnie came up to me after, and he was like, yeah, you probably wouldn't even find on them bulls because, like, I guess they weren't – I mean, they didn't buck any harder than that. You right. Know? Like, I mean, this bull was good. And so it was just – it you was just a buckle a really, too, huh? Yeah, I won I, – yeah, I won that bull riding. I remember reading – seeing a tweet after about that bull riding that said – uh not very many of us covered a bull tonight, but there's one thing for sure is we all got beat by a girl. <laughs> I died laughing. Yeah. It was just, That's, I mean, it's just frustrating. Cause well, like, like yeah. you said, there's even guys that, and I think, I think probably some people, it's hard to watch a girl get hurt. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's hard to watch a guy get hurt, yeah. but there's just something See, about it. Friends like go down deep yeah. down, you know, yeah. that like, if like a, a woman or a child were to get hurt, like it's just like more mm-hmm. unsettling. Mm-hmm. Regardless, though, you're right. I think. I think it's I about think how you a, handle it. Though. And then and then if you're a professional and you're but and and that same rule applies to like guys for me. Like, I was at an event recently and there was a guy there and I had a serious conversation with the stock contractor. Please, can we cripple this man's bull? Like we got to cripple his bull. He's gonna get hurt. We can't, you should not. And he was like, I agree. And I've already, he was like, I've already talked to the judge about it. I beat you to it. You're <laughs> late to the party. I've already talked to the judge about it. And the judge won't let me. And uh, thank goodness he just got launched. I mean, like yeah. second John, this dude didn't, he didn't yeah. even, he's there to prove a point. He's just, you know, he's there for attention. Thank the Lord he didn't get hurt. He got launched from here to the, to the wall and, and he was fine, but he could have got hurt, you know, yeah. but. And so that's a conversation I have to have with a lot of interns where it's like, uh, you know, there comes a point. Because I get, when you're starting out, a lot of people, are, they don't know if they're going to like it. Right. They might be a thrill seeker. But this may be a thrill, kind of like how I didn't like bareback riding, you know. And you don't need to keep doing something 7, 8, 10, 12, 35, 100 bulls into it once you already know you're not going to be passionate about it. Mm-hmm. So can you speak to that? Have you seen guys? Yeah. Like maybe they, they like the idea of, of being a rodeo. They like the yeah. idea of the, you know, wearing a fancy buckle around <laughs> day one, but they, their heart's not in it yeah. for the, the day to day work. Yeah. And if they're not into it, like, I mean, it's life. I mean, it's life or death when, you know, nothing like, there's no whistle that we can stop anything, so every situation has to play out. So if you're not willing to die for it, then, like, and if you don't love it, like, as much, like, that you would die for it, I wouldn't I wouldn't do it. You you love to get out there and do this and yeah. practice this and, and get better at it. Yeah. That's the difference. <clears throat> yeah. And it's not always there. Right. And you can see the guys, you know, like, you're, you're not here for the right reasons. Right. Yeah. And... I, I got on too many bareback courses. It just took me a minute, you know, and, and it wasn't, 
I didn't want to let my buddies down who were bareback riders. Didn't want to let my old man down. But I also just had this thing in me that I felt like I shouldn't quit, you know, and I can't quit. Well, like, that's different. Yeah, you shouldn't quit. If you're playing basketball, you don't need to quit in the middle of the third quarter. But if you hate basketball as a junior in high school and you don't want to play your senior year, don't play your senior year, you know. like. Yeah. But this is a little different. If you bareback riding, like, if you don't want to ride bears, if you don't want to ride bulls anymore, just stop riding them. You know, and then it was crazy. Like the day I quit riding bareback horses, none of my buddies cared. You know, my old man didn't care. And it was just like, I just realized like, I got to stop doing stuff based on what other people think. Number one. Yeah. Number two, it's okay to quit some things sometimes. I, I really struggled this last time with my knee. Like we had had conversations right. about it. Like I was struggling, not, mm-hmm. not the liver injury that literally did kill me. But my knee, like, yeah. maybe it's because Tandy did kind of get in my head about it. He was like, well, I think I can give you a stable knee for the rest of your life. And then five months into it, I re-asked the question, like, do you think I'll get on bulls again? And he was like, yeah, I thought that's why we were doing this. But up until that, and up until I knew that, I was, like, really, like, struggling on whether or not, like, I wanted to push myself. Like, I know I'm never going to get on the rank as bulls. Like, I know. Like, I know my limits. But, you know... Tony, Tony turns back, like, I can still go out there and have fun and, like, still pursue my passion of getting on bulls. Mm -hmm. And, like, and it's just about, like, where you're comfortable with being. You know, like, you've got to, like, come to that. Like, if you're, like, I'm never going to try to push myself. I mean, I ended up pushing myself because, like, after this knee, like, I had never thought that I would have gone to the PBR combine and rode a bull. Like, that wasn't on my agenda. Like, I really just thought that I was going to, take it easy and just you know see where it it took me and Mm -hmm. you know it took me to the places that it did and I'm not mad about it at all like I'm actually really grateful for it but you know like I really struggled coming back from this knee injury because I I just didn't know how hard I wanted to push myself again now the women's bull runs they're fine because we don't get on (laughs) anything that really bucks unless (laughs) I'm in charge of the stock (laughs) Daylin the way you talked about uh rodeo and it, it made me think, as far as, like, after the rodeo, like, if you see yourself, let's say you went to 10 rodeos, 9 out of 10 of those, what what what's it like for you after the rodeo? Do you like to hang out? Are you going to a party? Are you going, are you going to be running around? Or is it more like you kind of shut, like, your fun is the bull riding and then it's over? Yeah. Um, so, like, the year I made the font, the NFR, um, way we'd go to rodeo and then we'd leave that night and drive. Um, I'm not the best driver. I like to use a little bit of the road, so I like to drive at night. <laughs> <laughs> you like to drive at night. Yeah. I'm paying for the whole road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so would you consider yourself a partier? I wouldn't consider myself a partier. Yeah. Um. I just got like by that statement. You know, his mom's like, going to hear this podcast. Right? <laughs> but I, I, I'm, and I'm not, sa- I'm not saying. Well, my mom knows everything I do. There was I'm not JD. saying any any sort of extreme. <laughs> I'm not talking about like any sort of extreme. I'm just saying like, yeah. And everybody might hang out by the campfire and have a conversation till one or two in the morning yeah. occasionally because you're enjoying good company. But you know, rodeoing, there's a difference. Yeah. You know, like the, some guys, and more power to them. I'm not saying they shouldn't. There's guys that like go to the NFR year in, year out that yeah. consider themselves partiers. You know, I'm not talking about anything secretive. I'm just saying like, you know, for me personally, for some people have the misconception, especially when we get into Vegas, that like <laughs> I don't sleep for 10 days. <laughs> yeah. But that's not the case, you know. Like I just, I love, 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 love. Get chill bumps at the the being behind the buck and shoots yeah like when when especially like even before the bareback riding before you know like walk through the arena freshly plowed arena it's got that certain smell to it Mm -hmm. that is just an outdoor pin has a certain smell to it indoor pin a coliseum the locker rooms behind the shoots the gate slamming you're hanging with these certain guys that are about to enjoy this same battle you are like that's what I'm passionate about, you know? And so the, as far as like, I'll definitely stay up late occasionally if I'm enjoying company, I'm not opposed to that, but I, I'm just not necessarily <laughs> like, 
or if I, you're I don't under drink. contract too. I don't I don't drink right. I don't drink <laughs> and, or or any of that. So like a lot of the things that come along with partying, they're just not necessarily my cup of tea. Um, I'd rather have a cup of tea. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, so how how do you know? You were talking about all the adrenaline and everything. How do you come down from it? I mean, so like on Sunday, you know, the bull ride started at 8.45. Yeah, that was and crazy, so right? so really early. <laughs> and um, which is good. It brings it back to the high school rodeo days. You know, you get on bulls in the morning. Yeah. But uh, so like that night, you know, I think I don't know what time it started, but it like I didn't go to bed till like I laid in bed for a while you know, but my mind was racing, and then I just, you just had to want, like, it is a little difficult, you know, because yeah. you just, you're ready to go, might as well just, I feel like we just sort of just rolled right into it. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. you, you get yourself ramped up, you, you're getting the rush out of it, Yeah, but, you know, you got to come off of that. Yeah. yeah for get sure. it out, let it drain out of your system. <laughs> I'm a morning person. 840, like, 845, I mean, they bucked the first bull at 845? That's one, uh, nine. Yeah, I mean, four, I, fifteen minute intermission. I was up for four like, hours when <laughs> started. Ten o'clock would be about perfect for me. Nine's yeah. still kind of early. Yeah, but if I had to choose, like I would be, because I'm a morning person. Are you, are you a morning been. person? Yeah, I mean, sometimes I like to like like this morning wake. I I'm not used to waking up at five, and I did it yesterday, and then today. Um, that's a little early for me, but I do enjoy like getting outside and like. I enjoy that air, like, in the first thing in the morning, you know, how it's just, yeah, it's just different. I've been reading all these, like, Navy SEAL books and stuff and, like, military stuff. And Cameron Haynes, he's a runner. He's 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 not, a, uh, he wasn't in the military, but, uh, and then David Goggins. And uh, one thing that's been, like, consistent that they've talked about is, like, suffering, you know, and, like, um, not really shying away from it and, a lot of times leaning into it and um you know the the mental battle that you can overcome by for instance just taking cold showers and that was something yeah. i heard joe rogan talk about just it, he doesn't like all the time you know promote like you got to take a cold shower like what is it wim hof or whatever but but like for recovery and, and right. whatnot they'll get in a cold bathtub or whatnot and uh so i've just been like really playing that over in my head and kind of giving my myself permission to do those things. And so with that, I, you know, I, I try to start my day with something that like might suck. Yeah. You know, like a, a run or a workout or a cold shower, for instance. And, um, yeah. So what you're doing, you're priming your, your, your mind because it's, you're planning on a discomfort. So you've, you've got the, you've got the foreknowledge. This isn't, going to be good i'm going to walk myself through it i'm going to experience it let the bad thing happen and then let it go out of me so the idea is when the, when something comes out of the blue you've already trained yourself like no i can i can take it and then let it go right you see what i mean yeah. but you're 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 practicing doing that because yeah. you know it's coming the cold shower or the the run or whatever yeah so even day before <coughs> yesterday was like a an extreme version of it, but like I've got, I've got my little track down where I go. It's down tack road where we took the K and M 70 miles it's an hour. Miles. That's why I knew to go there. Cause I love <laughs> running this road. Well, I got to go by this one spot in this freaking pit bull. There's two. One of them is not that bad. A real warm, friendly pit bull. I'm talking like, <laughs> I'm talking like, like redneck, like pit, like my probably going to maybe like, Jerk the chain Fight off. Fight another dog one day kind <laughs> of pit bull. Like <laughs> cut ears kind of pit bull. And there's two of them. And the one, he's borderline friendly. He barks at me, but like he never really comes past the yard and he'll just like bark. It's just annoying, whatever. Like I don't even pay him any mind. And this time, this some buck had a buddy. And I don't know where it came from. They got more dogs, but this one was not maybe in a pen where it was supposed to be. <laughs> and she meant business. Yeah. And I started, and I had to walk backwards, like, I'm telling you, like, like she even touched, like, got close, her foot touched my foot, like, slid in, like, borderline killed. I'm just trotting backwards real slow. Right. Because when I turn, then it encourages her. Yep. Anyways, so, like, well, I get back to the house. 
then I, by the time eight o'clock starts, the the bottom the the point is eight o'clock starts. My day starts. I've I've taken a cold shower. I've ran five miles. I almost died by a a dog attack. Yeah. And then I had a workout, and then I stretched, and now it's eight o'clock, and I'm yeah, ready for my. The rest day. of the day's gravy. Like exactly, one hundred percent. You know, and I yeah. can't imagine like you know, like a Navy SEAL and like their kind of stuff, the kind of training they go through. Right. But like, so like I've, I've, I've always been a morning person. Like I might get up and feed, but I, but now like I've kind of got to start my day like that or I want to just because it will give me just this unbelievable perspective throughout the rest of the day. Right. Do you, do you have a morning routine and, and is, do you do things differently like on game day when you're riding versus when you're at home? Yeah, when I'm at, yeah, it's all kind of different. Like, I'll stretch kind of in the morning and stuff like that and work out. And just, it just kind of depends on how I'm feeling, too. But um, I try to get all my workouts in the morning before I start doing anything else. And then just because that's where, I mean, that's my job is bull riding. I need to be in shape, need to stay Mm -hmm. loose. And so I try to do it all in the morning um, and just, have to keep that a priority and right. it just kind of helps me throughout the day. Yeah. I mean, I don't think everybody has to get up stupid early. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's not, I'm not saying that people have to do that. I do. No, that's like for me, I don't have a choice. That's just when I, I get up. I don't recommend anybody do that. If that's, I don't, I don't use an alarm clock. Yeah. I, I haven't since I was in high school. So that's just my time. Right. So I'm just, I accept it. Like I don't always enjoy it being up that early, but that's just what the Jordan's a morning person. Jordan yeah. will get up. Yeah. That's just how it is. I'm up. Uh, I was out there. I haven't been getting up as early as I want to lately, but I've still been getting out and feeding by 6.30. Yeah. Like starting. Yeah. I was out there at like 6.20 this morning, I think, close to it. So we normally uh, um, wrap up podcast with uh, life advice. So, like uh, – just any, maybe it's a one-liner that you've lived by. It doesn't have to necessarily be like a one-liner. It can be just, uh, you know, maybe some, a paragraph of what's helped you through life to be successful. Um, but what do you got, Corey? You got some life advice for people? Yeah, it's something I'm working on. <clears throat> you know, uh, Jordan will back me up. Vikings, we are, we're not known for sharing our feelings or, or being good with them. <laughs> so I'm learning at my age, my advanced age, to uh, to feel things and accept them, let them come in and then let them go out like I was talking about, just let it go through me. We're, we're used to tightening that up a little bit. <laughs> she gets it. Yeah. It's a Viking thing. It's a Viking thing. So I'm learning to do that. I think that's a good practice, learn to... Uh, <clears throat> accept the feelings when they come in, and it's a funny thing when you acknowledge them and listen. You kind of they they dissipate. Yeah. What about you? Me, Jordan. Oh, I don't know. Probably my OG: be who you want to be, not who you're told to be. You know, go out there and do what you want, and don't look at what anyone else has to say about it. Good advice. I uh, so like I've read. Just got done with Cameron Haynes' book, Endure, and he's like a long-distance runner. He's run like upwards of 240 miles. Mm. Anyways, yeah, they, they're called ultra marathons. Yeah. I don't even know they were a thing. 100-mile <laughs> races all the time. That book and then um, listening to some of these Navy SEALs talk, like I think this is kind of just my observation, and I've, I've not really ever said this, so I'm just kind of working out the kinks on the – don't quote me on it, but like – I think to be good at something, you have to work hard, bare minimum. To be good at something, you have to work hard. To be great at something, you have to work hard and you have to be passionate about it. But I think to be the best, you have to be obsessed with it. Like like to where you stand out. Like if you have to, like I mean like the best, the best. Like obsessed. Like and a world I, champion. And I think an obsession <laughs> can sometimes sound like have a negative connotation. Yeah. But I don't think it necessarily has to. Anyhow. Yeah, you could you could change that word with focused. Yeah. What do you think, Dalen? Yeah. Let's hear your life advice. Would then. someone well, would someone call you obsessed over bull riding? Like just the everyday person, if they were to like see your life. 
I wouldn't say obsessed. Like, I try to think about it when I need to think about it. But, like, there has to be, like, if I, I can, I overthink some things. So if I try not to overthink it but still stay focused, like, I'm definitely focused where I want to be. Um, but not like, I feel like there's also an over-focused if you think about it too much, but that's just kind of where your mind has. Right. But even that, that you're doing, you're being strategic about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, like you're doing that for a reason so you can be better at it. Yeah. Yeah. So like, even if you do go play golf one day, like you're not going to play golf because you're you're not necessarily obsessed for sake of the argument. You're going to play golf because you know it's gonna that day off and taking that break mentally is gonna make you better at bull riding. Yep. Yeah. Like you're gonna go ride horses because of that. Yeah, that's what like I, I would almost exactly. argue that like that is kind of like you're just I think you're just really in tune with yourself <clears throat> and you know like, hey, I can't I can't sit on this barrel, for instance, like if you were for nine hours today. Yeah. It's going to be too much. And then I might even develop bad habits. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Then you're just practicing bad habits. Anyway, I'm not trying to argue with you. I'm just trying to observe. Oh, yeah. Because like, I mean, like that's what people should do. You should look at people like Dalen, like you're a world yeah. champ. And, and he has the focus. He has right. that focus to, to listen. And he listens, he listens to his body. He listens to his mind and he focuses. Yeah. Do you watch <laughs> your diet? Yeah. I've, um, which these last couple, like last week and stuff, I've kind of just been eating whatever, but normally I try to, um, and I got, I want to drop a little bit more weight before the team, um, from where I finished the season at. Uh, so I kind of want to be like 150 to 155 right in there. Um, That's I was about, weight. yeah, I was about right? 157 at the finals and stuff. Uh, I don't, on days I ride, I don't eat much. I just. I kind of just drink a smoothie and then, mm. um, which at the finals we uh, we did the same thing. <laughs> had a smoothie or a smoothie bowl, and then um, had like poke sushi every night. It was the only, pretty much the only place that was open. That was Dale's favorite. Yeah, I freaking love sushi. <laughs> <laughs> he does. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping. Oh, we got another sushi guy. Yeah. There's there's a few of the raw ones I like, but most of the sushi I like would be the cooked yeah. side of the menu because everybody always thinks raw. Yeah, but like there's cooked sushi. Yeah, I like the poke bowls. Have you ever had one of those? I just got introduced to that. Yeah, that's really good. That's what I love. I like sushi, but I love. I don't even know poke how to bowls. describe it. It's somewhere between sushi and like Hawaiian food or something. I don't yeah. know. I'll have to it's try. It's kind of like I don't think I've had it. A lot of healthy stuff in there. Yeah, like it's kind of like going to Subway for sushi. They put it in a bowl. Yeah. Kind of oh, and then you wow. walk down a line. Yeah, you got to you're like, "Okay, I'll take the yellowtail and the I like carrots it. and the I yeah. like it. Yeah. I'll have to try that. <laughs> What's your life advice? Um, I don't know. I think kind of what I've always and don't quote me on this, but like what no, I've we are, always, we're literally <laughs> quoting you on this. <laughs> But <laughs> when I'm always get, getting getting ready to, like, not ready to go, but just something I've always, like, kept me working hard is um, Mark 9, um, All things are possible for who who believes. So if you believe in something, um, you know, there's it's going to work out how it's supposed to. Mark I guess we'll quote nine, the Bible. I'm pretty sure it's Mark 9.23. <laughs> we'll quote the Gospels. Yep. <laughs> Mark 9.23. I'm going to have to look that up. Not to make sure that you're yeah. right, but like he just told you what it said. Did you not hear him? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what version that is now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, no, that's super. That's super neat. Yeah, if you don't, you got to be the one that believes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that's what's going on in Dalen's head. I've all always said like we. I was at this business conference, and I've always said this, but people will say like, "Oh, I'm terrible with names." And it, it frustrates me to no end. Like, absolutely you are. They're like, what? Well, you just said you are, so you yeah. are. <laughs> and this this guy got on stage, and that was, like, one of his things at the beginning. Like, I can't remember what he talked about at the end, but at the beginning he was like, he could he can go through and have 100 people tell their names, and then he'll go back and tell you all their names. And he was talking about, and he kind of said like that. He was like, people say they're terrible That's, with that names. That terrifies me. And then... That means they are. Yeah. It's like you got to stop saying that, number one, you know, because your mind and body are going to believe it and you're going to be terrible with names. 
And but anyhow, furthermore, he like attaches your name to like a body part, and he'll put it like he says he'll put it on something. So like Corey has a big nose. I'm gonna put it on his nose. He doesn't say a big nose, but yeah. you just happen to also have a big nose. So yes. like that's how I remember Corey's name. It's like I'm, on your. I'm having sinus surgery tomorrow. <laughs> We've been talking about it all morning. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, well, thanks for everybody for listening. Check out Dalen on all things um, social media. He is the world champ right now, PBR world champ, getting on some of the rankest bulls in the world, and and he's riding them. So uh, follow him, follow his story. It's the beginning of a, a long, great career, um, Lord willing. And uh, yeah, man, we're a fan. We got your back. So yeah, what a great podcast. Thanks for coming up. Yeah, Thank great you for conversation. Really interesting story. And uh, Jordan, Corey, check out Total Feeds. Let me let me see. There it is. This is our outro music. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> we are like, subscribe, comment, whatever you got to do. Check out DaleBrisby.com. We are on to the next one. Right. Did you want to do an intro? Yeah, I'm going to do it real quick. <coughs> so when we're all done and we know what we said, uh-huh. then we do the intro. Yeah.